Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. My entitled neighbor Karen is a complete nightmare and that's why I refuse to invite her to the neighborhood barbecue parties. She ends up crashing the party anyway and uses a gun to threaten us and destroy my property. Here is how I dealt with this entitled woman. Let's dive right into the story. The title story goes like this. I have no polite way to say this and I don't really care. My neighbor, who I will call Karen for obvious reasons, is a total witch. For the entire time that we have been neighbors, she thinks that she can control us just because she lives next door. Just for an example, she once filed a civil suit against me because I painted my fence just on my side of it, a color that she didn't like. The side of the fence that she never even sees. If that example is not enough to convince you that something is wrong with her, then strap in because you are in for a crazy story. Due to her entitlement and behavior, I never invited Karen to anything. That includes my yearly bar barbecue where I invite everybody else on the block to have a small party in my backyard. Everybody brings side dishes and drinks and we have an amazing time. I do want to point out that the first time I had one of these things I did in fact invite Karen and her family. However, it was a huge mistake as she tried to ration out food people could and could not have. Threw out full dishes claiming it has allergens in it, she doesn't have allergies and nobody else invited does since we check ahead of time. Also, she brought her two kids who proceeded to terrorize every other kid at the party to the point of hitting them. Nobody minds that Karen is not invited and honestly, I think the rest of the block actually appreciates it. This past party, however, I guess Karen got tired of not being invited and tried to just ruin it for everybody instead. We had to stop for a couple of years because of the pandemic and this was the first barbecue party back since then. Karen had tried to show up with her kids but I told her that she was not invited or welcome on my property. She proceeded to tell me that if I did not let her in, she was gonna cause some big problems. I told her that I knew letting her in would cause problems so I would take that risk. Karen did not intimidate me and she was well aware of that. So she went back to her house and started doing things in an attempt to ruin the party. She started blasting random music out of her house but we all knew that going along with it and dancing would give us the win against her. Then she started throwing random things out of the window but nobody was paying any attention since she couldn't actually throw hard enough to get in on my side of the fence. So essentially to try and get revenge on me she covered her own side yard in garbage. Ten 10 out of 10 genius plan by Karen, a real strategist we have here folks. Finally she ended up doing something actually horrible and she pulled out a gun. She started shooting at the ground and it quickly evolved to everybody fleeing into my house to avoid getting shot. She was literally trying to kill us all because she didn't want this party to happen. Then she must have switched the gun to something like a strong BB gun because she started shooting that and breaking my window. Police were called as soon as we all got inside and they thankfully came quickly and the shooting noise stopped. At least Karen was not dumb enough to shoot with police right there, that's the only smart thing that I think has ever crossed her mind. The police came into the house to talk to us and all the other neighbors that were in shock just standing in my living room. It felt like time was moving slow and my heart was racing the entire time we were there. Meanwhile, I had no idea about what was going on with Karen and was worried about her getting off without any kind of punishment or something. If that was the case, I was not gonna be sleeping at my house and made that clear to the officer. I got pulled aside by one of them and was told the situation that was going on outside. Officer, okay, so we surveyed the grounds and we can clearly see the bullet casings on the lawn. I can see the windows got destroyed by the BB gun and I can see the side of your house got splattered from a paintball gun. We have located all three weapons right by her window that faces your property, so in my opinion, this is cut and dry. We are gonna arrest her and take her into custody today. You will probably be asked to stand witness and give you a side of events in front of a judge. Me, can I get some kind of warning if she gets out on bail and comes back to her house? Officer, we can definitely do that for you, but also know that all the weapons are being confiscated. As for the window and damage to your siding from the paint, you will have to take her to civil court. The police left and the party ended right there with everybody wanting to just get back to their own houses. The kids were mostly confused and some really scared from the loud noises and windows breaking. I knew that the fact that she was shooting at kids was gonna become a real problem. I did not think to ask what happened to her two kids but I really didn't care at the time. I just wanted Karen taken away from me before she did something else. I did end up having to go to court for a single day during the hearings to tell my side of the story and answer a few questions. 
My reasoning for excluding her from the barbecue, past problems we have had, how I felt from the incident, etc. She got her kids taken away from her and a jail sentence of a couple of years. I was still able to take her to civil court though and I find something she said during that the most interesting out of everything. I was just looking for the money it cost to fix the windows and power wash the house siding. I wasn't pushing anything and honestly just wanted her to go and rot in jail for what she did. However, she was countersuing for money saying that I was breaking the law and she was only breaking my windows to stop the illegal barbecue. I have no idea if she tried this during criminal court in case anybody is wondering since I was only partially part of that. The judge asked her why she thought my barbecue was illegal. Finally, I got to hear Karen's reasoning and I knew it was gonna be good. Karen, social distancing due to the pandemic doesn't allow parties. That was a party and I was doing my due diligence and trying to do a citizen's arrest on OP. I really had to bite my tongue not to laugh at that for a couple of reasons. First being that those rules of grouping had been eased about 8 months before I had the party. The second being that in her mind shooting and trying to kill us all was a citizen's arrest. I got awarded the full amount I was looking for and she just got told that she had no basis for any of that. Since she went to jail I never got an update on what happened to Karen after that. As far as I know she should still be in jail unless she got out early but she never moved back in next to me. I saw somebody that was most likely her sister clearing out the house and selling it probably to pay for legal fees or something. Either way she is gone now and the word I would use to describe my feeling of it is relieved. Now I don't need to think about getting attacked by doing the oh so devious act of grilling a hamburger. And yeah ripe stars imagine getting so upset over a barbecue that you actually want to kill people. That is really next level. Anyway, if you liked the story, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment if you want to support me. Thank you so much and the next one is titled A Thief Gets What He Deserves. I was not sure if this was petty revenge or even malicious compliance but I put it here as it seemed better. So I used to work at a large car dealer and everyone was given assigned parking. The women usually got the first few rows as the lot could be a little dark and scary during the winter so consequently the guys got the rows up against the fence further away. No big deal, anyway my spot ended up being way down in the back corner of the lot and that was fine with me. Every now and then I would show up and there was a car in my spot leaving me to scramble for another one before work started. The problem being that the used car salesmen were trying to hide a car they had prospects on over the weekend and did not want it sold out from under them until they could show up on their next shift and if they worked Sunday they usually had Monday off. Salesmen being salesmen they would steal a sale from their brother to make a buck but that's another issue. So they would hide cars in employee parking and then the person whose spot they stole would have to find another spot usually at the last minute and sometimes they would be a dick and just take someone else's assigned spot. Causing a cascade effect. For some reason they seemed to take my spot a lot though. The first couple of times I went to HR and told them and they said they would pass it on but it still happened 4-5 to five times a month and I was getting tired of it. On a bright and early Monday I came in and sure enough there was a used car in my spot. I was in a particular mood that day so I grabbed the keys to the tow truck and moved the car way out onto the service lot and dumped it into the area our body shop used to store cars waiting for parts. I put the truck away and then parked my truck a fine 75 IH Scout in the spot and went to work. A few hours later a salesman came looking for the car and after only finding my Scout went around asking who owns said Scout and then finally found me. He wanted to know where his car was and I played stupid. I asked him where it was parked and made him take me to where he last saw it. He sat right here and pointed to my space with my Scout in it. I said I don't know this is employee parking and it shouldn't be here anyway. Someone must have moved it. You should go see HR or your manager and complain to them and then I walked off. I assumed he found it because I didn't see him again. Next Monday the same thing happened but this time I towed the car and parked it across the street on another dealer's lot. I knew the manager there and he said it was fine. I returned the tow truck and went to work. A few hours later another salesman was back in my face looking for his car. I told him the same thing. I have no idea what you're talking about and I went back to work. A few hours after, later, HR, the used car manager and the salesman show up in my bay looking for the same car from earlier. So then the manager and HR started asking me where the car was and I asked them to show me where it was parked. We went down to the lower lot and he pointed to my spot with my scout sitting there and said it was right here. 
I asked him, so it was parked right here in my assigned parking place and now it's gone? He said yes, it was parked right here and I added in my spot. I just wanna confirm that, yes, in your spot. The UCM was getting annoyed with all of this and I asked why are you getting pissed at me? Your kids, pointing at the sales guy, keep parking them here. It's my assigned spot and I've been dealing with this for months. He responds, I'll deal with that, where's the damn car? I said, parked across the street at friendly dealers. What the hell? How did it get there? Well, I towed it. Hilarity and anger ensued and I went back to work. HR said, please don't do that anymore, come see me first. All was fine for about the next week until the following Monday and sure enough there was another car that is parked in my spot. Pissed, I went to HR and she said she would talk to the manager as soon as he shows up. Tuesday and the same car is still there. I thought screw this and drove my scout up front and since it had been raining and my roads were all dirt and mud, my scout looked pretty bad so I parked it in the used car manager's spot right outside his office and made a point of parking badly and on the curb with mud clumping on the ground. I went to work. About two hours later when that manager showed up to work, I get paged over the intercom. OP, please see the UCM in his office. I thought this was gonna be good. I walked into his office and he points to my scout again. Is that yours? Yes. Why is it parked there? Because even after last week's incident with a towed car, your kids have parked in my spot again. So every time they park a car there, I will park here. H. Well, you need to move your car. Me. I cannot. My spot is occupied. H. It cannot stay there. Me. Well, it's going to until your kids move that car and every day from now on if there's a car in my spot, I'm parking here. H. Who the f do you think you're talking to? Move the car or I'll get a towed. Me. What the hell is your problem? This is all your fault for not dealing with me like a manager. You wanna play that way? I'll move my scout but before I do, look at the rear number on that thing. H. So what? It's a nice big steel bumper and what I'll do is just back into my spot and if there's anything in my way, I'll just push it backwards. How does that sound? H. You cannot do that. Me. Well, get off your lazy ass and tell your people to stop hiding cars in my spot. I'm tired of this. My car stays until your car moves. And then I walked out. I get back to my bay and about 10 minutes later I hear over the loudspeaker OP, please see general manager in his office immediately. I walk into GM's office and the used car manager and HR are both there. The UCM looks pissed and HR looks amused. The GM asks what is going on and I told him. I spoke to the salesman and asked nicely, I spoke to HR and told her what's going on and I've spoken to Commander Douchebag a few times and about his people parking cars in my assigned parking. They still continued so I started parking in his spot when his people parked in mine. He then shakes his head, asks the UCM if this is the case and he starts to yammer. The GM just holds his hand up and says, stop. He looks to HR and asks if this is true and then she said this has happened. The GM asks, can you please move your car and I'll settle this. I closed the door and could hear the GM reaming the UCM through a closed door 30 feet away. And yeah, ripe stars, I cannot even imagine how satisfying that must have felt for OP. But moral of the story, don't mess with the tow truck driver. My ex-boyfriend tries to spam me with pictures of him going at it only to get a nasty dose of payback from my friend. Once upon a time there was a naive young maiden, me, who was yet to discover she was a lesbian. Before she came to realize she was in fact a lover of the ladies, she had some pretty nasty breakups with men that more or less sealed the deal for her preference for tacos over hot dogs. This is a story of one such breakup, or rather the aftermath of it. So back when I thought I was straight or to be more accurate desperate to prove to my friend that I was, I had a boyfriend who we will call JJ, an abbreviation for the name of the most hated character in Star Wars up until 2017, JJ was a total jerk who made fun of me, lied to me, nitpicked my insecurities and basically made it his goal in life to shame me for having a boyfriend who was so utterly out of my league like him. But it was not that much different than what I was used to from my dad and I was desperate to convince myself I liked men so I sucked it up for a while. But everybody had their own boiling point and mine was watching him unabashedly flirting with other women in front of me. So I finally got the courage to dump him. In a perfect world he would have accepted the breakup gracefully, taken a closer look at himself to find out what prompted the demise of such an otherwise perfect relationship on his part, owned up to his shortcomings and moved on with his life. 
But sadly, this is a world where the virus and racism is thriving and JJ's attitude towards me in the coming weeks was a perfect reflection of the absolute cesspool we live in. The guy just refused to accept the reality that I dumped him and not the other way around and got it into his bleached blonde frosted tipped hat that he would make me come to terms with the fact that dumping him was the biggest mistake of my life or die trying, unfortunately for me he decided not to go with the latter. What followed was several days of him spamming all my social media accounts with posts he had tagged me in, from passive aggressive think pieces about how he hoped someday I would forgive myself for letting a catch like him go to Instagram videos of him living his best single life without me. I tried to block him but he would either make new accounts or get his friends to tag me in their videos of him making a fool out of himself at their parties. But the true putrid icing on this feces riddled metaphorical mess of a cake was when he began to text me videos of himself going at it with other women while telling them to smile for my ex and reminding me how I threw away the once in a lifetime opportunity to be in his latest chefed sheath of the week's position. Hashtag this could have been you. I was irritated and annoyed and just wanted him to leave me alone already, but where I just wanted to block his number before he could send me anything else, my friend, we will call her Grace because she was my saving one, has a better idea with far more amusing results. You see, Grace works for a company that I had mentioned to her in passing that JJ was applying to. She was reminded of this when she saw him at the building she works at for an interview some time before. She goes to his Instagram account and one look at his account tells us that he is so blessed and thankful that he got the job and he cannot wait to come into work Monday. Much like her piece, JJ was never one to keep good news to himself, this was going to be his downfall. So Monday rolls in and Grace comes to work dressed to the absolute nines. She is wearing pumps, a full face of makeup, received a blowout, stuffed her bra, the whole shebang, which was coincidentally the best way to describe what was going on in my closeted gay panties when she sent me a picture of herself to let me know her plan was in motion. Knowing that JJ was fresh on the rebound, she knew he wouldn't be able to resist her. Upon entering the workroom, her boss introduces him to the rest of the team and sure enough, the first thing he notices is Grace in all her glory. Later in the day, he practically drags himself over to her, hips first and starts putting the moves on her. Grace puts on a show of falling for his cheesy pickup lines, which to be fair, I genuinely did at the time, but in my defense I probably would have thrown myself at him in my desperation to beard myself had he simply winked and made the kissy face and agrees to give him her number. She punches it in with the intention of blocking him later, I had warned him in advance that JJ is the kind of guy who's been politely declined enough times to call a girl in front of him to make sure she didn't give him phony digits, but she also makes sure to switch my number with her bosses. And now all we have to do is wait for him to shoot himself in the foot. A few days later Grace triumphantly announces that the last she saw of JJ at work was him being summoned to human resources before clearing out his cubicle. Nobody knew the exact reason for why he was fired but everybody at her job received an email about how this workplace was a professional environment with a zero tolerance policy for sexual harassment. Later that week everybody had to attend a compliance training session where the basic gist of it was don't send unsolicited nudes of yourself ever but especially don't be stupid enough to send them to your superior of all possible co-workers. It did not take Albert Einstein to figure out the circumstances surrounding JJ's disappearance. And yeah guys, I think that's an important lesson definitely for some people to learn. Just don't be a jerk, especially at your workplace. Please stay professional. And if you don't, then learn to live with the possible consequences. Either way, if you have watched until here and enjoy my content, please don't forget to like the video and maybe post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And the next one is titled, Racist and Aggressive Bully Gets Poison Ivy. When I was about 10 years old, we moved to Pennsylvania. I am Mexican and still had some trouble with English, but was like 99% fluent, just not enough to avoid this bully. He would chase me around calling me Bina, wetback and asking me if the Rio Grande is refreshing. 
After a discussion with my parents about it, they said it is just an insecure boy saying mean things his parents taught him and to just ignore him. If he got physical, my dad told me not to do any of that, just tell the teacher crap. He said, if that boy hits you, you hit back harder. You have my permission. After some more insults, he realized he wasn't getting a response like he wanted, so he decided to get physical. He shoved me and picked up a clump of poison ivy with his sweater. This was not a big deal, because I was faster than him, but my best friend was not. He went after her, so I tackled him to the ground, his face landing on the very poison ivy he was holding. I straddled him and rubbed his face in it. He cried and never looked in my direction or laid a finger on me or my friend again. It has been 18 years and I am still not sorry. And guys, I am sure at one point or another in all of our lives we have dealt with bullies before and I am wondering what was the best way you have ever dealt with an annoying bully? Let us know in the comments. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.